Welcome, kings and queens, to another episode of Unapologetic, your number one podcast. This is the show where kings and queens tell their legacies and on. So get ready for the gems to drop and pull up to the table because we're ready. Was first inhabited by people from Africa. And people from mm. Africa had very dark skin because they were exposed to a lot of sunlight. So their bodies produced a lot of melanin, protect their cells from the damaging rays of the sun. Now, here's the kicker on that. <laughs> and you'll live to see it. As this climate change gets worse and worse, and yeah. the hole in the ozone layer gets bigger, and more and more sunlight is allowed to enter our environment, more and more pale-faced people are going to die of melanoma, mm. which is a kin skin cancer. I'm, this is, I, I don't make this stuff up. Yeah. It's a skin cancer that you get because you don't have enough melanin in your skin to protect yourself from the damaging rays of the sun. That so before sense. you die, not before I die, but before you die, you will have pale-faced, melanemic people who don't have much melanin in their skin telling their children, marry black. <laughs> wow. Find a person of color. Find a person of color. I want my grandchildren to survive, and I want my great-grandchildren to survive. And the only way that can happen is if more of us, more of us have more and more melanin in our skin. As the, mm. as the sunlight gets stronger, more so-called white people are going to die. Wow. Woo! You, yeah. And you, you, want to remember that, you want to remember that the word wow, if you turn it upside down, it becomes mom. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you blowing my mind uh miss elliot I, I didn't have for you to be at the age you are now man i wish i wish i could jump back and we could have a conversation when you was younger you i know you was a rocket <laughs> back then uh, nobody nobody <laughs> wanted to talk to me then and nobody wants to talk to me now and they really don't want to talk to me now because they're bound to make some stupid racist statement. And I'm bound <laughs> to say, wait a minute, do you realize what you just said? And then they look at me like, oh, here she goes again. I say, yeah, here I go again. When you're around me, if you don't know any better than to say those things, I'm, when you say something racist, uh, I am bound and determined to point out to you that that is a racist statement. When somebody's, oh God, I'll never forget the day, Linda Guillory, tall, melanotic, Linda Guillory, who hired me to work for US West, and I were standing in the in the building waiting for us to go to work. And this diddly blonde woman came up on heels about this high. Diddle <laughs> and diddle means to weaken with short, quick steps. I don't know what you call diddling, but that's what she was doing. Short, quick steps. She came diddling up and she said to Linda Guillory, when we, at that time we called black, Linda, when I see you, I don't see you black. And I thought, oh, there's going to be bloodshed. So I backed up because I had to wear that suit the next day. And I thought, Linda's going to kill her. And Linda looked at her and she said, I think we need to make an appointment with the optometrist because you obviously have a sight problem. Wow. That was a strong I was that, just, <laughs> oh, that was, that was so good. And this woman said, I don't, Linda said, I'll help you with this. And that woman diddled away from her faster than she had diddled up to her. And I bet she <laughs> never said that. I bet she never said that to another person person of color again i bet because how can you how can you see how can i see you and not see the largest organ on your body inch by inch which is your skin how is that possible that is a great That's question a, i've heard yeah, that yeah, so that? much all you have to say is do you really you can really ignore the biggest organ on my body? Come on, fool. This is inch by inch. <laughs> wow, but this is crazy. Yeah. The whole thing is crazy. And, and that we're still talking about it makes it even crazier. Yeah. Because if we had been doing, yes, if we had been doing proper education for the last 50 years, it would have been good if it had been for 200. But I know <laughs> as a result of doing the blue eye brown eyed exercise with my students, that I changed them and I changed their parents after only two days of work. Wow. Parents came to me, yes, numerous parents came to me after the exercise was over, when they came in for their, their uh, te parent-teacher conferences and would say to me, thank you for what you did for my son. What did I do for your son? You taught him that it's wrong that you use the N-word and you, you taught him not to treat people positively or negatively because of the color of their skin. I said, why is that important to you? She said, and several of them said, because my husband always used the worst words in the worst way. 
and my son will mm. say to them, and a, and a mother came in and told him, my daughter corrected my grand, my mother, my mother-in-law, because she used the word in the wrong way. And my daughter said, if you're going to use that word, I'm going to go out, out, out in the yard until you go home, grandma, because we don't use that word in our house. Mm. In a two day, yeah, a two day exercise has changed the way, at least That's amazing. all the kids who went through my classroom. Yeah, the kids who went through my classroom in third grade and then in junior high were different from the kids, the other kids in the other two third in the other two classes. And my daughter, my sister was substituting at the high school level several years after that. And she came home after the first week and said, there's something strange about a group of kids up there. I don't know what it is, but they aren't like the rest of them. And I thought, I'll bet I know what it is. And at the end of the second week, she said, Jane, I found out what's different about those kids. I said, what is it? She said, the ones who are different are the ones who went through your class in third grade. They've had the blue-eyed, brown-eyed brown -eyed exercise, and they will not allow teachers to make racist statements in their presence. I said, is that good? She said, it's absolutely fabulous. But she said, it makes the other teachers uncomfortable. I said, I realize that, I but maybe it's time for us to make, yeah, it's time for to make to make the other teachers uncomfortable. The English teacher came down to the teacher's lounge for lunch one day, and she was just upset. And they said, well, what's the matter, Mary? She, Mary Lou, and she said, the worst thing just happened in my classroom. What happened? I used the N-word. And she said, N she didn't say N-word. She said nigger. Right. And she said, and, and one of my students stood up and said, we don't use that word in this school. And if you're going to use it, I'm going to go out in the hall until you stop. What would you have done? And my sister said to her, well, I think I'd stop using the N-word. <laughs> right. Now, the kid had to teach the teacher. What? So the person who was supposed to be being educated had to be educated. He had to educate the educator. Yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to do that. It's, it's, it's oh my the God. Whole thing. It's also infantile. Teachers have been through four years of college now, of course. At that time, you didn't have to have four years. You had two years or none. You could, mm -hmm. Anybody could be a teacher. But now you have to have a lot more education. However... Right. Right. If you're still teaching the inadequacy of those who are other than what we call white, if you're still using the words white and black in college classrooms, close the damn college <laughs> until you have professors, until you have professors who are able to say melanemic or very little melanin, melanaceous, which rhymes with gracious and spacious and efficacious, so it's a good one, melanotic, which rhymes with exotic. Learn those three terms and stop using white and black and red and yellow yeah oh my god just use light brown dark light brown dark brown but stop using black and white because it perpetuates the lie and and psychologists and sociologists say race is a social construct there's a word for that statement that's bullshit i'm sorry but that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> race is not a social construct race is a damned lie mm. the idea of several different races is a damned lie and it was constructed to give some people power and to take power away from other people and if you don't if you think i'm wrong about that get the book nile valley contributions to civilization have you read it i've read that one i love that book because uh, it breaks down uh, why you should never point out the differences between in in, in a single you know like a, a single race to break up the classification it's almost like animals like arachnids reptiles it it, it doesn't make sense <laughs> but but a rap, a reptiles come in lots of different colors but they're all reptiles arachnids come in all different colors but they're all arachnids Exactly. Homo sapiens come in all different colors, but we're all Homo, sapiens. homo sapiens. And if I say, <laughs> yeah, and, and if I say Homo sapien to a bunch of the proud boys, they think I'm saying calling them homosexuals because they're so stupid oh that they haven't God. read the book. It's it's people who follow Donald Trump are for the most part fairly low IQ and fairly uneducated. Mm. And they can change though. That's that's the whole idea. They that's, choose not to. They, they choose not to because when you're in his presence, he has you convinced that he is right. And he is as wrong as any person I've ever seen in my life. He is absolutely, totally wrong. Yeah, it seems like and Donald what, Trump <laughs> really, really got you. Because it, 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 you can use, you used him in so many references and it was so accurate each time. <laughs> Be, because because yeah. our because political politics 
we can't run away from them. I see that now as me being an adult now and I'm learning, my, raising my kids, and I tell them politics is everywhere and everything we get into. But how how you, I want to say, portray that passion and your belief really does matter amongst the people you, you care about. So you, you well, got to be you, careful. But politics is a good thing to be into. Politics isn't the problem. Politicians, that's the problem. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, politi politics is absolutely necessary. Politics is what makes America make good strides. Right. We have done good things and we'll continue to do good things because of our politics. But if you have politicians that twist and distort the politics, if you have five members of the Supreme Court who are going to vote, that will send this back to the lower courts, this immunity thing. Mm. So that will draw it out longer so that won't, this immunity thing won't be solved until after the election. Then you've got members of the judiciary who are acting like politicians in response to a politician who is, has, has no idea what real judgment is, who mm. does not judge things fairly, who judges things only from his reading of a new world order. Mm, or this Brack, is what he wants. Brack Breyer or Brack, or whatever. I can't, can't pronounce that Brack Breyer or whatever the hell that, that little show that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that that little the, the whole thing is absolutely it's absolutely unacceptable. And for those who, if there's anybody still listening, go to my website Jane at JaneElliott.com and download the printed learning materials. The first is a set of typical statements that white folks make that think they aren't racist. You yep, read through those statements, <laughs> and then you read, yes, and then you read the first one, and then you go to the clarification, and you see what what people who are hearing it, how they respond to that. It's just fascinating. Read through those typical statements one at a time, and then go to the clarifications one at a time. And then you're going to say, well, what can we do about this? There is a set of commitments to combat racism on my, on my website. Go to that commit those get download those commitments to combat racism mm -hmm. read through them if you have done it check yes if you haven't done it check no after you've gone read through all of them then go back and choose one that you check no do it for a month do it for a month if you're going to change racism you have to be you have to do it actively and there are about 18 things that you can do in your own environment to change the racism in yourself and in those around you because we've all been indoctrinated with the myth of whiteness and rightness and white superiority. And there is no whiteness, so there's no rightness. And there is no blackness, so there's no slackness. It's time to get over these nonsensical ideas. But if you do want just one of those uh, clarification, one of those commitments, the people who are around you will change. They'll change where, who they spend any time around because many of them will, uh, they will <laughs> drop you like a bad habit. On the other <laughs> hand, it, isn't your, it isn't your responsibility to change them. It's your right. responsibility to change you. It's responsibility mm. to you. And then after you've done all those and chosen one to do, then go to the bibliography and read every book listed under racism and under anti-Semitism and under homophobia. Because mm. we are a nation that does not want to talk about things that question our validity and the rightness of what we're saying. So we don't want to know. So we just don't read those. Read those books. Read at least one of each of those sections. And by the time you have finished one of each of those sections, you'll be going around thinking, what the hell is the matter here? Why are we still doing this? <laughs> right. 500 years later, come on, people. Get off your polyunsaturated fatty acids and make a difference here. Because we could if we chose to. Right. Sorry. I, I, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not. I'm not a bit sorry. Thank you. I was about to say, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't apologize. No, <laughs> don't be sorry. No, no, no. I, but I do wanted to ask you uh, uh, just two more questions. I wanted to ask you about the um, uh, are, are you or are you going to be in any type of documentaries or any movies coming up? Because yeah, you have you you're you're the Jane Elliot. It's amazing you not even. <laughs> on a, a Warner Brothers box off something. Like what's going on with that? They they don't like you that much? <laughs> well somebody's making somebody's somebody's making a documentary and somebody's making a movie. But it's been they've been talking about it for a long time. I think right. they're waiting for me to die. 
because when when we were the first the first television crew that came in and filmed in my classroom many many years ago said you know um, if somebody'd shoot her we could make a lot more money and we'd sell a lot more films what? and I heard him say and I said thanks that, yeah if, if somebody just whoa shoot her, Tom we, oh yeah hey, hey then then I would be famous you see but nobody has shot me. I've gotten lots of threats. I get threats every week and I'm still getting them and I'm thinking, go for it, fool. But he said, in my presence, he said, if somebody would just shoot her, uh, we could we could get a lot more. This would make a bigger difference. Wow. That, that, that's crazy. That's, you, you're, really, you're literally threatening a, a woman's life in front of her, in front of a, in front of an <laughs> audience. And then you got the, wow, that, that I applaud you. And then I and I and and then I say, "Go ahead, fool. I'm going to a better place. You're going to be stuck here with the results of what you did." <laughs> and if you think for a, yeah, if you think for a minute that every person and every pale face and every dark faced person would be in favor of somebody getting killed because she said, "No white people. There are no black people. Right. There are no red or yellow people." If somebody is going to kill me for that, then that makes it pretty easy to grant a would-be president immunity for anything he says or does. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 In That's this dang, in this yeah. country, in this yeah, in this country, it's all right to kill a person of color, particularly a male. Yes. And it's all right. Truth. And it's all right for black, so-called black females who are pregnant. To go into the delivery room and not be sure that they and their child will come out alive. Mm. And because of that, a group of a group of uh, women who deliver babies, Miss Midwives, called me and asked me if I would speak to their group one day in Los Angeles several years ago. I said, "Wait a minute! Why would you ask me? I I had four babies in five years, but I don't know anything about delivering them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get them. I don't to take care of them." And this woman said, "You don't understand. We." We, black women are afraid to go into the delivery room because they aren't sure they or their babies are going to come out alive. So what we want to do is have women, midwives who are qualified to deliver those babies and whom these black women can trust because they know they won't let their babies or them die. That's now, and that is so, so un-American. That's, that's scary. Wow. It is so against Hippocratic oath, do no harm. Hmm. But if it's a person of color, if it's a mother of color or a child of color, they're expendable. Hmm. This has this is absolute insanity. Yeah. And if if they had been around, if this nonsense had been around when Jesus was born, you would never have heard of Jesus. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That is so true. Yahshua is, would be uh, non-existent <laughs> at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if and if there were no Jesus, there would be no Muslims. There would be no Baha'is. There